Welcome to the world of age gap love. Remarkable couples willing to defy social convention. I want that, like right. you've had an ecstasy tablet. That's what okay. I want. Okay, have you got any? In order to pursue intergenerational romance. I wasn't hunting for a 22-year-old partner. It was fate and destiny. And they wouldn't have it any other way. Mm. Beautiful. We ask how young is too young. Finally, he goes for it. He really goes for it. We reveal the realities of age gap dating. Yeah, I'm attracted to who I'm attracted to, and they are all roughly 25, 30 years younger than me. And find out what life is like between the sheets. People must think that Norma creaks in the bed or something. Meet the couples who are redefining the rules of love. <laughs> Pensioner Norma Harvey, 68, is getting ready for a big night out in Brighton. I don't like my face without makeup. I even go to bed and put fresh makeup on to go to bed <laughs> in case I die in the night. <laughs> At least I look nice when I'm dead, won't I? <laughs> Her dancing partner for the evening is husband Chris, who, at 36, is 32 years younger. We went to uh, probably about 18 months of drive dance classes, and we've not been for a while, so uh, they'll just arrange for us to go out tonight. It's a big night for Norma. The 68-year-old has been ill, so this is the first time she's been dancing for six years. Going there tonight is a bonus that I'm still here. Depending on how tonight works out, we'll be, we'll govern whether tonight. or not we ever do this again. The couple have been together for nearly two decades, after Chris spotted Norma across the crowded dance floor of a Butlins holiday camp when he was just 18. Girls go through and collect those guys go through. Despite the huge age gap, young Chris was smitten with the then 50-year-old. Been out with plenty of girls my own age. Uh, I found younger girls immature. I just wanted to date an older woman. I just walked up to her. I got don't know where I got the courage. I thought I'm going to go up and talk to her. He said, "Come back to the club. C You're come going for a back. Dance with me. Come, come, come back. Come have a drink and <laughs> dance with me." And I said, "No, my feet are killing me, didn't I?" And I said, "Well, I'll carry you. And I'll give you a piggyback back to your chalet." Mm. Yeah, and you stood at my chalet door, didn't you? And I'm like, "Well, what's going to happen now?" And then she goes. Do you want a coffee? I didn't bother about what people were saying. I didn't doubt it and think, oh, this is wrong, because I enjoyed it. So I thought, well, why should I not do it when I want to? It's my life. Some doubted a relationship between a teenager and a 50-year-old could last, but 18 years after that steamy night at Butlins, Norma and Chris are still going strong. And despite her recent health problems, Norma has successfully navigated her return to the dance floor. Yes, I was tired out. Well, I would be at 68, wouldn't I? And he's only 36. Chattered, chattered might be the word. Yeah, but I'm OK <laughs> now. I'm OK now, and I've stopped. But we did do quite a lot of energetic dance in there. But, and I haven't moved that much for six years, have I? No. The very idea of entering into a relationship with someone half your age leaves many skeptics baffled, but there are those who wouldn't have it any other way. I love these shoes, it goes with this dress. Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Look at this boot, I love this boot, you know. 28 year old Tanisha is a self confessed fashionista. Versace, this is Versace. Love this dress. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Make my boobs. Ooh, ooh. And despite the whopping 36-year age gap, she's married to Michael. Tunisia has an allowance every month, and you do your shopping out of that. That's fine. Yeah, and I make my money as well, yeah. work, do my part-time job. You, you, you don't go out and buy and bring it home and say, I bought this, please pay for it. You've, no, never, no, you've no. never done that. No. Tunisia is originally from Sierra Leone. 64-year-old Michael works for the Medical Research Council and often travels abroad. He met his future wife during a trip to the country. I was visiting Sierra Leone with a friend of mine, Henry, and we were having a meal in a restaurant there. And I spotted you across the room, and I thought, wow, attractive-looking young lady. And Henry said, oh, I know that lady. And he kind of introduced us, and he came and joined our table. 
and we had some beers, we had a chat, yeah, we went out to a club afterwards. And I went to your house, you took me to the house that first night, yeah. yeah. So we had fun, that, that was yeah, good fun. that was yeah. good fun, yeah. And then our relationship started to grow, grow, yeah. and the rest is history. At the time I wasn't hunting for a wife, I wasn't hunting for a 22-year-old partner. Sounds a boring thing to say, but it was fate and destiny. They're not alone. Chris and Norma also firmly believe their age gap relationship was written in the stars, and they have the evidence to prove it. The week that we first met, we got the, the paper and there was the Mystic Meg stars, and my stars at the end said, destiny spells a woman with a name beginning with N. Mm. And my stars said, your destiny is with someone called Chris. The stars predicted they were meant to be, and three years after they met, Chris and Norma became age gap husband and wife. I was 21, and you were 53. 53. And it was emotional. It, yeah. It was, it was a lovely day, wasn't it? Perfect moment. By Martin McCutcheon, I came into that. Titanic um, on the way up. Yeah, that was, no, that was our, wasn't that our first dance, Titanic? As well. What Norma and Chris couldn't have predicted was the negative reaction to their idyllic age gap wedding. None of your family went. No. And hardly any of my family went to no. the wedding. And I suppose that was because of our age gap. Some of my friends thought it was awful and didn't want to talk to me. It was a bit upsetting, like not having family guests at your wedding. But oh, there was nothing we could do about it. We just had to get on with it because we wanted to get married. Even eight years later, they could only persuade a handful of their closest relatives to attend their lavish wedding blessing ceremony. I love things like that. I love princess things. I love romance and, you know, all lovey-dovey things. We look like a celebrity couple, didn't we, actually? Despite the family fallout, Chris is convinced they did the right thing. I was only 18 when I met Norma, and looking back on it, I was still a kid. I don't regret it, but I would still do it again. Falling head over heels for someone from a different generation can come with its fair share of ups and downs. But some find age gap love simply irresistible. I'm Mandy, I'm 56, and I like young men. Yeah, I'm feeling very invigorated and ready for the day ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy from Cambridge has been looking for a serious relationship with a much younger man for more than two years. Here's my arms. I don't think I'm going to get in trouble. The main proviso is that he must be half her age, so anyone from her own generation doesn't stand a chance. I can honestly say with my hand on my heart that with the exception of Antonio Banderas, I have not seen an older man that, that is attractive. I think I'm extremely sexy. And as long as I think I'm sexy, that's all that kind of matters. But Mandy's gym buddies aren't so sure. It would depend on who the younger man was. Yeah, that's you know. true. Yeah, of course. I think we can all be judgmental. So if I saw Mandy with my son, who's 21, I'm not saying that they can't have a love affair and be wonderful, but I'd still be thinking, well, you know, he's only 21 and she's 50 odd. There'd be something in my mind that would think, would it work? Such concerns are shared across the pond in America. Nearly a quarter of those who live in the sunshine state of Florida are aged over 60, and increasingly, they're looking for love well into old age. All right, quiet the set. Action. One of them is 61-year-old actor Joe Leon. I'm sorry, honey. Would you like something? On screen and in real life, he's madly in love with a woman nearly a third of his age. Are you serious? Actress Angela DePasco is just 22 years old. And I play this character who is a, a retiring age in the FBI, and I work for a young upstart boss, and we have a romantic relationship. I'm a little on edge to meet her parents because I'm older than both of them in reality and in make-believe. This 39-year age-gap couple were thrown together by an accident on set. 
I was just sitting there having makeup put on my knees, which had been bruised and bandaged up from filming that had happened the previous week. And I saw this and I was appalled and I said, what happened to you? And she told me that she was tossed around in the field and, and scraped up her, you know, her knees and legs and she was a mess. But of course I was immediately attracted and, and blown away by his, his sexiness. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> the duo fell in love right under the noses of their movie set colleagues. When we found out they were dating was toward the end of the filming and we kind of figured it when Joe and Angela showed up in the car together to drop her off for one of her scenes. We're like, wait a minute, this is new. Joe's been married before and has a son who is two years older than his current partner. In stark contrast, Angela, who was just 21 when they met, has led a sheltered life. For me, being homeschooled uh, for my high school years, I really didn't get an opportunity to date much and when I went to college I had like a boyfriend for about two weeks you know that was the longest relationship I had I've had milk in the fridge longer than that right? <laughs> <Yep. laughs> despite her lack of experience Angela knew in her heart that Joe was the only man for her I go over and sit next to her on the couch and I'm thinking I wonder where this is gonna go and she was like you know it's kind of like what took you so long no, yeah attitude. I th my exact words were I've been waiting for you to sit there all night. <laughs> so finally, he goes for it. And when I say he goes for it, I mean he, he really goes for it. Well, you know. He really goes for it. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> no, it's not. So, hey, I, I got it. <laughs> I mean, I won. He did get it. He got it. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let's, let's clarify that. He got it. The kiss. He got the kiss. <laughs> Back in Cambridge, 56-year-old Mandy is using social media to hunt for a man half her age. The man of my dreams could be the person that's just bleeped me now. I don't know who it is. I've not looked. But whoever he is, he's going to be great, great company. He's going to be very devoted to me, but he's not going to be a doormat either. I don't know who he is. I love the mystery of it all. This children's entertainer is focused on finding a toy boy. 36. That's old for you. Any future partner will also have to get the thumbs up from Mandy's two children, 16-year-old Roman and 13-year-old Gretel. You're going to talk to him, aren't you? I'm going to say hi back. She's more like a sister than a mum. I think I can talk to her about um, if I like someone or something because she, she won't care, like she won't be like, oh, you can't have a boyfriend, even though I don't actually have one. Mandy believes there's no shame in searching for age gap love. Oh, he's, ready. he's ready already. He's ready and he's typing oh, oh. straight away. Huh? <laughs> and it's an adventure she's happy to share with her kids. I think that um, it's quite a cool thing and it's just quite interesting. Whereas like with my other friends' mums, they're like quite normal. Whereas my family's quite unique. With friends at school who are, who are girls, they think of you as an inspiration. They've all said that they want to be MILFs when they're older. <laughs> <laughs> He's just absolutely blown it. What did you say? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm say? gonna read it to you. He's put, okay, will you be up for sex though? Oh, well, there you go. Simple as that. No, no, but, no bye. I do share a lot with my children. I do draw the line. There are certain things I clearly do not discuss because it's not age appropriate. We're just all open with each other. I think it's healthy. That's it. It's gone. It's over. No sex for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, not for you, for you. I mean, like, for you, like, I was talking to him. For Mandy, sex shouldn't stop at 50. But what's the reality for our other age gap couples? We always have sex, right? Yes. Yeah, like normal people. <laughs> sex is wonderful. People must think that Norma creaks in the bed or something. Creaks? Because she's so much older than me. She squeaks That's or something. Nice. Or she needs oiling. Maybe you're not as flexible as you used to be. He just said you can't go <laughs> too deep into it. Anything he lacks in flexibility, I certainly make up for. Yes, thank you very much. We're not suddenly different sort of creatures with different bits to two people of the same age. It's the same. We enjoy it immensely and frequently. Yeah, it's just strong. So I give my credit for that. Give me five. <laughs> Away from the bedroom, pensioner Norma has another secret passion. 
No, it's too big, that one. An obsession for handbags. No, I won't be wearing yellow snake skin. You almost got 24 boxes of handbags, plus handbags that are not in boxes, plus handbags in the bedroom. Norma's got at least 500 handbags. I don't think I'm addicted to handbags. I just think I like handbags. I haven't really got addictions. Um, I, I don't know. Do I need treatment, then? <laughs> addicted or not, Norma is once again hitting the shops on the hunt for yet another bag for her ever-growing collection. You should have a handbag shop. Yeah, but then I you'd never sell any. Handbag. You'd never no, sell I'd any. Keep, I had a <laughs> handbag shop. I'd keep all the handbags. But out amongst fellow shoppers, another familiar issue rears its head. You know that girl that just walked past? Did you see that dirty look she gave Not everyone approves of age gap love. We still get looked at a lot. We get looks in the street. You know when people have clocked you, because you get that second glance. There were loads of situations like that where people used to have a go at them. I know. There was a guy that spat at us because he saw us holding hands. Mm. And then the week that we met, we had a meal, do you remember? Oh, and that guy come over and said... What do you mean in Wales? Yeah. And he said, you can't, uh, you can't kiss an old hands in front of my kids. I'm going to take you outside. Oh, do you remember yeah. that? You nearly had a fight, didn't no, you? No, I did have a fight. It's definitely a, re uh, a reality that there is a stigma attached to being in an age gap, especially with an older woman and a younger man. Ten years isn't much. 20 years, you're pushing it. 30 years, you're getting into serious, serious territory there. Mm -hmm. Over in America, Joe and Angela have also had to come to terms with age gap stigma. Give me a hand, man. I want your hand, beautiful. But they take a different approach in the face of unwanted scrutiny. We have a lot of fun with it, especially when people think that I'm their father and quickly Ange convinces them that I'm not. <laughs> I'll run up to him with something, I'll grab something, and I'll be like, oh, Daddy, please buy me this. <laughs> Daddy, please. Yes, and, and Daddy does. <laughs> oh, Daddy does. <laughs> I do dress young because, you know, that's my age. So I, I kind of I shop in the junior section. You know, I like colorful things, things that he probably wouldn't like to see me in a lot of the time. Well, and there are some things that because, we do get the, mm, no, that's because yeah, it's definitely. just too young. If it, if it just looks too, <laughs> too obvious. Young. You know, like Bobby Socks and carrying a lollipop doesn't work. But, you know, I think, you know, contemporary hip-looking things are good. <laughs> you like me as a schoolgirl, too. <laughs> yes, stop. <laughs> that's for another video. But behind all the jokes, there's a serious point. People could make the impression that he's my sugar daddy by looking at us, but that's just from pure looks alone. They see an older guy, they see a younger girl, they immediately think, uh, she's getting money for this, which I think is just really ridiculous. So an older person is not lovable. I guess people could get that impression, but it's completely wrong. Whoa. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Look oh, at this. Perfect. Yes, yeah, see, that this is. is oh, nice. Oh, thanks. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, I like that. Yes. We'll be taking this good. one. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Gives me something here, right? <laughs> TMI. 64-year-old Michael knows the feeling. He's been married to his 28-year-old wife, Tanisha, for the past four and a half years. But despite this show of commitment, he feels skeptics still question their relationship. Well, everybody lives in their stereotypes. Oh, yeah. um, you know, gold digger, sugar daddy, being well, taken papa. advantage of, taking advantage, all the obvious things to be said. Um, and that's what you would see from the outside. I mean, that's what we look like. We look like stupid old man, got a bit of money, beautiful young lady, taking him from what, what she can, and five years' time she'll, you know, walk out when she's plucked him clean. I have to go out there and, and look for a job. I cannot just depend on Michael as my sugar or big papa, no. So Michael has encouraged Tanisha to revive her modeling career. Since we came back to the UK, We've been trying to get Tanisha some modelling work. Um, a lot of effort, a little bit of success. It's an important day, actually, because what we need to do is to uh, refresh Tanisha's portfolio of photographs. And then, hopefully, if the photographer's good, we're going to get some, uh, some stunning pictures. Oh, this is very important to me, because I'm doing it for my career. I think maybe if I do this picture, hopefully, life will change for me. 
But Tanisha will have to convince model agency boss Carla that she has what it takes to make it in the business. So this photo shoot today is very important. It's what help us evaluate Tanisha as a model to see how she performs in front of the camera and how she composes herself. Because obviously, as an aspiring model, she needs to be confident and very good at what she does to be able to get jobs. So depending on how these pictures come out today, we'll be able to see if we can hopefully take her on. Michael is taking time out of his day job to manage his age gap wife's modelling career. Well, stand kind of in the middle. That was good. And then you do something a little bit sideways. Swing your hips, huh? <laughs> I think she's got the shape, the talent, the looks, and the uh, craft, if you like, the ability to be able to, to be able to become a good model. Okay, same kind of pose, but turn around facing this way. Well, I think I'm a very, very fortunate uh, gentleman because at the age of 64, I've got a stunningly attractive young wife, and here we are doing a glamour photo shoot in West London. I love every minute of it, it's great. It's a really good laugh. Let's get changed. But supermodels have a reputation for tantrums, and Michael has let the makeup artist leave early. Tanisha is not impressed. Got it wrong again. One side, yeah? Should have heard the rabbit when we're trying to choose what to wear today. <laughs> no. Right, okay. So, Are you ready for this next shoot before the photographer goes home as well? Turn your head my way. Every time the flash goes off, different different style. That's it. No, please. Bit of a rush day, very hot. Yeah. But we got there. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a good day. The coming days will reveal whether Tanisha will be able to relaunch her modelling career. In Cambridge, 56-year-old mother of two, Mandy, has a big night planned with a 27-year-old. I have got a date that's happening um, in about an hour from now, so I've got to finish getting ready. I'm really excited. I started chatting to this guy about three weeks ago. He had a lot of energy in the chat and he looked nice in his pictures. We chatted on the phone for ages. I can honestly say I am excited. But Gretel's first impression doesn't bode well for the evening ahead. Wait, is that him close up? Yeah. He <laughs> looks really dodgy. <laughs> Really? Mm -hmm. I think he looks nice. I mean, I'll get another picture. There he is. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I think he looks really nice. I like how he looks. Yeah, he's got a tie on. He's got like this hat on. I think he cares about what he looks like. I think he's good looking. I think he's nice. Right, that's it. So all I've got to do is just put on a bit more makeup. What about my hair? Up or down? Let me do my makeup first. Well, when it's up, it looks like you've just been to sleep. <laughs> How it the down. wind swept. How it down. I had a really, really nasty experience. Um, well, I met a guy. He said he was 24 on the website. He turned up with no money. And then at the end of the evening, he'd said, I know this is a bit cheeky, but could you give me four quid for cigarettes? And it was like, sorry? All right. So anyway, I gave him the money. A few days later, I got a text message from him saying, do you, do you want to see me again? So I said, no. And at that point, he went, well, actually, I'm only 15, and if you don't give me 30 quid, I'm going to report you to the police. And oh, I completely freaked out. I found that he was actually 23. But just the fact that somebody could kind of um, try it on like that was horrible. But such experiences haven't put Mandy off her search for a Mr Right half her age. At this stage, my focus is on, oh, I really, really hope I like him. If I do like him, that will just completely flip and it'll, I'll be sitting there thinking, I hope he likes me, I hope he likes me. I'm on my way. 
for some, age gap relationships are an adventure into the unknown, which can raise tricky questions, such as how young is too young? I met a sweet, sweet girl. Lord, was she young. In Florida, 61-year-old Joe has penned a song about his love for 22-year-old partner Angela. A team of wild horses, couldn't bulls apart. Hearing the song for the first time was really mind-blowing. It's like every girl's dream, really, have someone love you so much that, that they have to put it in song. Age makes no difference in matter. But in the beginning, Joe secretly doubted their age gap relationship. Matters came to a head over a seemingly innocuous photo. I'd taken a picture of her in a bikini at the pool, and I <clears throat> was looking at that photograph, and I just thought, oh my lord, am I nuts? This girl is so young. Because in that photograph, to me, she even looks younger, and 39 years is a significant age gap. It just really kind of freaked me out a little bit. So I, I was <clears throat> feeling that maybe I should t address that to her. And, and of course, her response was, you know, let's see what happens. He's perfect for me. He's everything that I want in a person. Mm -hmm. If he was younger, I'd be with him. If he was older, I would be with him. If you love someone, you love them. The age doesn't matter. It was a snap that came close to signaling the end of one age gap relationship before it even began. In contrast, 28-year-old Tanisha is hoping her recent photography session could revive her career. There we go. Nice. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. The shots from the portfolio shoot are back, and the photos seem to be hitting the mark. That, I think, is the best shot. Yeah, I, lo I love that. I uh, love that. I love that, too, my nice. bomb. Yeah, your bomb yeah, looks I nice. Yeah, I love my bomb, you know. Yeah. I love that, too. Wow, just look gorgeous. But what of Tanisha's hopes of being signed up by the London model agency? When we met Carla after the shoot, she was saying that, you know, if the shoot went well and the images were fine, she'd take you on, on her books through the agency. But um, mm -mm -mm. kind of all the only response we've had is, why don't you come and do some more photographs? <laughs> to be fair, some of the feedback that Giovanni and Carla gave you was quite good on the day. It was about oh, yeah. being more relaxed. Yeah, confident. Showing more expression it, 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 through more your eyes. More natural in front of the camera. You yeah. know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you haven't done it for a little while. And yeah. That, I could tell you were a bit tense and it wasn't quite coming through. Yeah. So it was a useful learning experience. We got some quite, a couple of quite good images out of it, which oh, would be yeah, useful. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I was impressed, you know. Yeah. yeah. And the hunt for work continues. Tanisha isn't the only one hoping for a new career. In Brighton, Chris and Norma are planning a trip to a local recording studio. Budding dance DJ Chris, who is 36, has big ambitions for his 68-year-old partner, Norma. You go and listen to something like the Black Eyed Peas or something like that. It's hit after hit after hit. And I want to make an album like that, and I suppose I'm bored with the way the dance music industry is going at the moment and where it's leading and it needs a new sound. Today, he's chasing his musical dream by reworking a classic. I'm 36 now, and I can't leave it any longer. If I leave it till I'm 40, I'll never be where I want to be in the music industry. Vocals will be provided by Norma, who's a former cabaret singer. Her career stretches back to the working men's clubs of the 1960s. Studio engineer Jez normally works with rock bands, but today he's charged with interpreting Chris and Norma's vision of the track, Fever. And a steel drum. He suggested a saxophone. Like a, a and dun, a steel dun, drum. Dun, 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 And then a um, boom, 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 with a sax him going boom, boom. It just sounds good over the top. It's got a, almost it, a Star Warsy it, steel drums feel to it. After some essential maintenance, that makes me feel better. Norma is finally ready to shine. But producer Chris is proving hard to please. Just the last half of the song, where mm. you're splitting up the words a little bit. Because it's got quicker, I'm rushing it and leaving out my vibrato. It's been a day of musical highs and lows. Norma is still not convinced she's reached Chris's exacting standards. I wasn't happy with it. No, I would have liked to have done it again and done more. Because I'm, I'm like that, I'm very fussy. Nevertheless, husband Chris is upbeat. 
studio stuff went very well. We got the beat synced to the music and we got Norma's new vocal. And I think that from there we can produce something really good. Despite the disappointment of the portfolio shoot, East London age gap couple Tanisha and Michael have something to look forward to. Cooking this soup today. Tanisha's originally from Sierra Leone, but today she is getting ready for a special ceremony to become a British citizen. Today is my big day, you know? So it's very important to me. I don't, I don't want to look trashy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a culmination of a four and a half year journey for her to become a, a member of the British community, I think it's great. Um, and it sort of solidifies our relationship as well. I feel that you having a British passport makes us a bit more together as a couple. Oh yes, of course, I want to be part of the society, you know, and I want to learn about British culture, you know. You have to do the Life in the UK test, obscure questions like, you know, in what year was the Reformation, in what year was the Restoration, you know, what are the names of the Roman forts in Hadrian's Wall? I mean, you know, go out in the street, Joe Public, most people wouldn't be able to pass first time without some sort of revision. Around 200,000 people proudly become British citizens each year. Now, Tanisha has to pledge her allegiance to the Queen. And sing the national anthem. After all the pomp and ceremony comes the moment Tanisha has been waiting for. I think I'm blessed, you know, today. Today is a big day for me to got what I always want in life and I got it today, so I think, yeah, I'm very excited about it, very pleased. We did invite the Queen, but she was busy today, so she couldn't <laughs> make it. <laughs> but, she, but she was looking over your left shoulder because oh, yeah. the picture was behind you. <laughs> She's going, you be a good girl, you behave. <laughs> Welcome to the UK. So today, Tanisha has shown her commitment to the UK and her age gap husband, Michael. But will 56-year-old mum Mandy finally find someone much, much younger who is willing to commit to her? She's determined to share her life with someone in their 20s. Tonight, she could be meeting the man of her dreams. Sales worker Jonathan is nearly 30 years younger than Mandy, but for him, the age gap doesn't matter. When I first saw the photograph, I kind of looked at it and I was like, yeah, she, she'd get it, you know? She's, uh, she, she's, she's, she's pretty hot, so yeah. That was it. The first night we were on the phone for about an hour and uh, we sort of spoke about the age gap. It's not a big issue. It'd be nice to sort of get to know her, um, find out a little bit more about her and actually seeing her in person because we spoke on the phone quite a bit, but we haven't had a chance to meet. Hi. How are you doing, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Thank you, yeah, you all right? Yeah, not bad. Looking very nice. Oh, you too. <laughs> Thank you. I do believe it is possible to take one look at someone and just know in that first instance you love their look, you love their image, you love the way they, their mannerisms, you love their voice, and you just hope that as the story unfolds with this person they're going to live up to that first impression. To be quite honest, yeah, I'm attracted to who I'm attracted to, and they are all roughly 25, 30 years younger than me. What can they offer you, though? Well, obviously, like me, yeah. you know, you, you might say, or oh, it's a bit silly, actually, me saying me, what can I offer you? But yeah. what would you want a younger guy to offer you? Apart from, obviously, the obvious, <laughs> which is they're full of stamina, endurance, okay. and, and everything it's else. The, it's the, their energy. It's and their, the energy. It's their, um, where they're at in their lives. I would be like... Absolutely kind of thrilled to meet somebody special. Yeah. See you soon, my love. Yeah. Take care, yeah? yeah. Bye. It's been a pleasure Bye. meeting you. And uh, drop me a text after, yeah? Let me know okay. you get home. Okay, right. thank you. Right. See Bye. you soon. Bye-bye. Went all right. Yeah, went really good. Better than expected, to be fair. Um, I think it was a really good first date. You know, we clicked, we gelled. She's a nice lady, you know, she's a, she's a good catch. And it seems the feeling's mutual. I would say... That was a success. 
definitely. He lived up to what I hoped he was going to be. He looked great, possibly better than I thought from the photos. But more importantly so, he was really, really easy to be with. And there was no awkward moments. I would definitely see him again. Bit of a no-brainer, really, but yeah. Being in an age gap relationship can raise some uncomfortable questions, particularly about mortality. It's a subject all too familiar to 68-year-old Norma, whose recent health problems came close to claiming her life. The thought of dying scares me. I want to keep alive, perhaps till 100 or even more than that. I know I am going to die one day, but I want to be prepared for it. She's even left her husband, 36-year-old Chris, detailed instructions for her own funeral. Please don't cremate me urgent. Use the photo in the blue, that one. Hymns love divine, Lord is my shepherd. My albums are come out of the church, cry me a river, and don't invite anybody I don't like. It's upsetting to think about your wife's funeral. And plan it, but I suppose planning it in advance means that after it's happened, it gets you used to it. That you haven't got to go through it then when you're at your worst time. So today, Norma is taking one giant step towards her dream ending by visiting a nearby funeral director to make sure she gets the perfect send off. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to today. I mean, I got up this morning. If you'd expect someone to get up that we're going to walk plan their own funeral and see what they were going to have, to be all tearful and all scared and all that. But I got up and I went, oh, I can't wait. It was like I was going to my wedding. And Norma has a very clear idea as to what the centrepiece of her dream funeral will be. I really want to have horses and a carriage for my funeral. It's real important to me. Well, fortunately, we've got the horses down here today. Oh, good. So what we'll do, we'll have a little walk out to the horse box. Wonderful. And then you can see them all set up. The horses and carriage will cost Norma and Chris around £1,000, but for her, it will be worth every penny. Oh, th that is it. That is exactly it. You've got it down to a T, what I want. Right, come And plans. the colour and everything. Oh, they're beautiful. Hello. Hello. You're gorgeous. If I didn't do this now, I wouldn't be able to do it at my funeral, so I can do it now as well. <laughs> this is just me to a T, isn't it, Chris? William what, and Harry. Are yeah. they called William and Harry? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. When I said they look royal, they are. <laughs> they are, yeah. What you're doing, actually, is not unusual in one way, in as much as you're prearranging a funeral. But yeah. what is nice is you've actually made the effort to come down and, and see it. I feel like a queen, you know, like a pre princess, you know. I, I, I don't even want the jazz band. Now, I was going to have a jazz band, but I think the jazz band would take away from the classiness of this. Yeah. I think this is too classy for the jazz band. Yeah. Mm. How lovely is that? That is marvellous. It's that incredible, is like, isn't it? <laughs> it's so perfect. Oh. <laughs> well, it just I goes to. I to say a bit more. She wants to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, hang around you a bit. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> it was the most amazing experience. That. It's like what the Queen would have. Perfect. In Cambridge, Mandy is reflecting on her date with Jonathan. I was enthusiastic about meeting him. He seemed sort of bubbly and friendly, and he lived up to that on the date. Um, however, I am old enough and wise enough and experienced enough to know that one and one don't necessarily make two. I mean, we sort of briefly texted to say that was fun kind of thing. And then a day or two later, I invited him to come somewhere with me. No response whatsoever. This is part of going out with... I've, a, I think it's part of going out with people that you meet online, part of going out with younger men. You know, people change their minds. I change my minds all the time. That has not put me off 
at all in any way, shape or form. The bigger picture is I would like to sort of meet someone where it's not all about highs, it's more about kind of like uh, contentment and something that's kind of like, you know, a bit deeper and a bit more meaningful, but there's nothing wrong with the highs. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so hot. Oh, my glasses. I'm blind. In Florida, 22-year-old Angela has found her age gap lover, but is still coming to terms with living away from her family home for the first time. But when I met Angela, Angela was pretty much, um, I would say, sheltered in certain things. Oh my God, look at all this. All right, all right. <laughs> this is a bit of a disaster. Looks like we have a small child wrapped in here. <laughs> but Joe and Angela's gulf in life experience doesn't make them question their age gap love. Angela does keep me young. I have a youthful personality, I, I know that. And I, and I like the kid around and play. But now that I'm with Angela, it is just magnified. It's just fantastic, yeah, definitely. I don't think I'm sacrificing anything at all, especially not my younger years. I, I think, if anything, I'm making the most of them. Uh, I, I mean, what, what else would I be doing with my younger years? Going out and, and partying and being with every guy I see or something? What, what kind of life is that? I have someone that I love, that I really care for, that I feel like I can spend the rest of my life with. And, you know, I, I don't see how that's a waste. It's, it's an amazing relationship. Skeptics may disagree, but these age gap couples believe intergenerational romance can flourish when love conquers all. I love that you keep yourself nice. I love that you look good. I love that you're caring. Plans for the future are to, are to continue to enjoy living together and being in love with each other, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see what the world brings us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that you look after me. I love that we're in love still. I will find my knight in shining armor, and we can all live happily ever after. It is a relationship, and the, the age difference is a side for us. I mean, we, I don't look at that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my yeah. girl, you know. I love everything about you. Do you? Yeah. God. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, great. OK. Next time, more remarkable stories of age gap love. Go right ahead. And we follow 68-year-old Joan on her mission to find a new toy boy. Younger men can keep up with me, but the older men cannot. <laughs> <laughs>